Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, grant to me your Holy Spirit that my words would be your words. Grant to your people your Holy Spirit that they would hear your words and be edified by them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They were afraid. There were no hallelujahs that first Easter morning. That first Easter morning was not a celebration. The women who had went to the tomb that first Easter morning left wrapped in confusion and fear. And it's easy to understand why. In fact, they probably went to the tomb with a little bit of fear. Their leader, their friend, had just been flogged, mocked, spit upon, crowned with a crown of thorns, and crucified on a cross. He was a criminal. Being a known associate of him could get them in a lot of trouble. But they pushed through that fear and went to the tomb anyway. But even on the way, there was probably still a little bit of fear. Who's going to roll the stone away? And I don't know how this was said, but I, I think one way that it could have been said was, we, we probably shouldn't even go. The stone is going to be blocking it's the, the entrance. It's, it's just a waste of our time to do this. Let's just turn around and go back. An excuse not to get in trouble with the authorities. Because if they went, the Romans might know that they were part of this man's group. The Jewish leaders might know that they were part of this man's group. They could be in some serious trouble. But they pushed through that fear and went to the tomb anyway. And when they get there, they experience a different sort of fear. The stone has already been rolled away. It's already gone. I don't know about you, but if it was me, I would have been like, I ain't going in there. Ain't no way. Somebody's already on stake out there looking out for us. I am not going anywhere near this tomb. I'm not going to be the next one to end up on a cross. No way. I'm going in that tomb. But these brave women push through that fear and go in anyway. They entered into the tomb. They move forward into the tomb, and instead of seeing their beloved friend lying there, they see a man dressed in white. And they were alarmed, it says. The man tries to console them, tries to reassure them. He said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. He tried to remind them of Jesus' promise. He tried to encourage them to spread the word, but they couldn't get past that fear. Trembling and astonishment seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That Easter morning, they left with Easter fear. A fear of the unknown that lingered even after they departed the tomb that morning. Despite the promises of Jesus, despite the lessons which he had taught them, that Easter morning the empty tomb did not bring joy, it brought fear. And so they ran away with their mouths shut. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Fear is an emotion we all know. In fact, I bet many of you woke up this morning in a state of fear. We have to get to church before somebody sits in our seat. <laughs> Afraid that your seat would be taken. But fear is an emotion that we all know all too well. For some of us, fear is a fact of our daily lives. Will I have enough money to pay the rent, to pay the mortgage? Will I have enough money to put food on the table? Are my kids going to be okay? Are my grandkids going to be okay? Am I raising them the right way? What happens if my insurance runs out? Am I going to live the rest of my life in pain? I'm afraid to live, but I'm afraid to die. 
The list of fears could be a mile long if we put them all down on paper. The women knew that fear as well. But even in the midst of their fear, the women did not go away empty-handed. They still had the message, the message that that man, that angel, had given to them. He, he is not here. He is risen. They pushed through that fear. We know how the story ends. They pushed through that fear. They told the disciples. They told Peter they had to get the word out. But that doesn't mean that the fear was gone. The Romans could still come after them. The Jewish leaders could still come after them. That fear still remained. But the empty tomb changed everything for them. The empty tomb helped them push through that fear. The empty tomb transformed that fear so that the fear is no longer the driving factor in their lives it's the resurrection that's the driving factor in their lives the empty tomb becomes the thing that motivates not fear the empty tomb the resurrection of Christ changed everything for them the empty tomb again didn't mean that there was no fear it meant that they could push through that fear. Instead of living in fear, they lived in the resurrection. That's how we live our lives as well. There is still fear, but the resurrection of Christ overcomes the fear, helps us push through the fear, helps us face the day ahead because we know that Christ is going to be there with us because the tomb is empty. A little take on a story that I heard earlier this week, or, or late last week, actually. There's a man, we'll call him Stephen. There are changes going on in Stephen's life. He and his wife have been struggling. They have kids. They're struggling to pay the rent. They're struggling to put food on the table, living paycheck to paycheck. And at Stephen's job, new management has taken over. There's restructuring going on, and Stephen's job is on the chopping block. Seems like everything is going wrong in his life. He doesn't know what's going to come next. He's afraid. He sits down one day and he prays. He prays. Lord, take away my fear. Lord, show me what to do next. Give me a direction to go, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. When he finishes praying, he sits there for a little while, not knowing what to expect, until finally he gets up and goes for a walk. He wanders around aimlessly for a little while, not real sure where he's going, not real sure why he's going the direction that he's going, until he walks past a church. It's Easter season, and they have an Easter scene set up outside, the three crosses, the empty tomb with the stone rolled away, and he stops and he sees that tomb. He sees the stone rolled away. He knows that the tomb is empty, and he stares at it for just a minute. The tomb is empty. He nods to himself and goes back home. The tomb is empty. The tomb didn't take away, the empty tomb didn't take away his fear. It didn't change the situation that he's facing in life. But he knew that because the tomb is empty, Christ is risen and Christ is with him. No matter what happens in his life, nothing can take that away from him. So Stephen no longer lives in fear. Stephen lives in the resurrection. That empty tomb drives us back to the promise of Jesus proclaimed by the man in the tomb to those women who initially left trembling and astonished and afraid, but the empty tomb changed them. They no longer lived in fear. They lived in the resurrection. Stephen no longer lives in fear. He lives in the resurrection, and so do we. The empty tomb changes things for us. It allows us to see the world and its fear in a completely different light, the light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so that the fear no longer drives us. It's the resurrection that drives us, that helps us push through the fear, knowing that in the end, everything 
will be all right. Christ is with us because that tomb is empty. The empty tomb changes everything for us so that you no longer live in fear. You also live in the resurrection of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. In his name, amen.